Hey, what's up, investors? Jason here. In this video, we're going to be talking about DraftKings stock. Now, it was just announced that the very popular short sellers, Hindenburg Research, just announced that they're shorting DraftKings. Now, Hindenburg Research, you probably know these guys. They're the ones that made the very damaging reports on Nikola Motors, Lordstown Motors, Clover Health, and many other stocks out there as well. Now, they just put out information saying that they are now also shorting DraftKings, and they made their accusations uh, about this company so i want to just talk a little bit about this kind of address it and give my opinions about what i think about DraftKings stock now DraftKings is a stock that is very highly shorted as well so this is going to be a very interesting one so as we get to it if you guys don't mind please do me a huge favor please be sure to smash destroy annihilate or gently press that like button to help me out with the youtube algorithm help spread these videos to more people that might find it interesting subscribe if you have not already and if you want to help support this channel even more, I do have a Patreon, and there is a private Discord attached to that. Link is in the description. Now let's get to it. Now, DraftKings stock has been on a very steady decline over these last three months. We saw it recently pop back up, and it looked like it was on a good rise here in June, and then we recently just saw the stock tip over a bit. Now, Panning out here over the last year, we saw this stock go up to some pretty big highs really fast and then drop down in price pretty quickly. Now, DraftKings is a stock that went public through a SPAC merger, and it just so happened to happen at a very bad time. Of course, they it all happened during the pandemic, and the whole sports scene was very uncertain during this time, but there were still a lot of people that were bullish on the stock. We saw the stock go on an insane tear during this time. Now, it's kind of just been a, uh, a consistent thing of just people uh, making reports in the stock. There's been a lot of shorting on DraftKings in general. And that's why we saw these, this stock go through these big dips that it's gone through. But right now, I mean, why not short DraftKings? I'm not saying I shorted DraftKings, but for the short sellers, why not try to short this stock right now after seeing it drop down in price so much and then it being back on a rise because what is going on right now what is the main thing that is a huge catalyst for DraftKings to really start making some serious dough well that is the NBA draft and fantasy basketball is a huge catalyst for DraftKings so let's talk about what Hindenburg Research said we're gonna use this article here from the Wall Street Journal and uh, Hindenburg Research published a report early Tuesday that said DraftKings gambling technology subsidiary SB Tech makes about half of its revenues in countries where gambling is banned. According to the reports, SB Tech created an entity for what Hindenburg calls its black market operations ahead of last year's merger with DraftKings and a blank check company that took the combination public. DraftKings shares slid in early trading, then recovered. They ended the day down 4%. Now, SB Tech says that uh, they do not operate in any illegal markets. A DraftKings spokesman said, we conducted a thorough review of their business practices and we were comfortable with the findings. Now, that's what helped the stock go up during the day. Now, I was unable to find the report on their website. I, I don't think it's been updated to show it, but they they posted it on Twitter, and then you can get to it from Twitter and get to the uh, direct article that they have on their website from there. Now, I'm not going to go too much more into the details on what Hindenburg Research and what the Wall Street Journal even says, because we know, for the most part, n neither one of those guys even like stocks that go public through a SPAC merger. They're always saying something bad about stocks that go public through a SPAC merger, in my opinion. So uh, just to look at DraftKings in general, we know for a fact that there's a lot of catalysts for DraftKings. And I personally do like DraftKings. It's not one that I really have a whole lot of shares of, but I find it to be a very interesting stock. Now, I just want to kind of just take you guys into the financials a little bit and just let you guys see what DraftKings is doing here for the people that might not be too familiar with DraftKings but kind of understanding this stock and uh, want to look more into it. So to get a really good understanding of DraftKings we need to look at their income statement and their balance sheet and it's very distorted I should tell you because if we look at their trailing 12 months here uh, off of their their uh, to total revenues here what we'll see is Q2 2020 uh, of it being very small, and that is because Q2 2020 started on April 1st of 2020, and what was going on during that time? Absolutely nothing. The entire country was shut down, 
and we saw games for the NBA and such. Everything spaced out more as uh, as games started, but there wasn't really a whole lot of fan excitement for sports really going on during that time anyway. So DraftKings revenues weren't that impressive. And to get a really good idea, understanding here is looking at the Q1 2021. Uh, we pretty much had the um, we pretty much had the Super Bowl during that time, but there wasn't anything that happens again after that in Q1 of 2021. So this next quarter that they're going to be releasing, which is going to be coming out in August for the Q2 2021, that's probably going to be an absolutely amazing quarter, and that's going to have the NBA draft on it. So you can pretty much expect that there's going to be a lot of good details of the revenue within that. So we can't really judge this company off of what their total revenues are for the trailing 12 months because we don't really know an accurate number of any of that information as well as many other stocks that are out there. Now, of course, they're not a profitable company. I mean, their net income is not, in the po is not positive. And that's an argument that many different short sellers can always make about these different companies out there. But if we look at and compare it to what their Q4 2020 net income was, it's, it's pretty much better by 50% what they released in Q1 of 2021. And now let's get into what their balance sheet is. Because, of course, this is information that you have to be looking at. I mean, if you're somebody that follows Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett will always tell you, look at a company's income statement and look at a company's balance sheet. And that should be the one of the main things you need to go off of when investing into a company. Now, when we look at the balance sheet, it's going to tell us a couple of things here. It's going to tell us what their total assets are. And we can see it gradually grow here every single quarter. And it is much better assets in Q1 of 2021 in comparison to where they were at Q2 of 2020. And we look at the total liabilities. Now they have much larger amount of liabilities in Q1 of 2021 compared to what their liabilities were even in Q4 of 2020. Big difference there. Now, why is that? Because, well, of course, liabilities include things like debt and such and money that's in with inside of accounts payable and things like that. Now, we can see easily here that they did add quite a bit of debt. They added 1.33 billion dollars in debt in q1 2021 that's what the debt is but how much of that debt is long-term debt because that's also information that we should be knowing here so if we look into what they're what that numbers entail we can tell that as far as the long-term debt goes they have 1.31 billion dollars of long-term debt so this total debt here good majority of this is long-term debt now there's many people out there that can be looking at that and going well that's debt that's long-term debt i don't like that but then again, somebody like me might say, well, debt is also cheap. I mean, interest rates are at an all-time low right now. Uh, that kind of makes sense because they have other options. I mean, they can dilute shareholders, which many companies do. And I don't usually have a problem with it if it's a growth stock. I mean, it makes sense. But that's still diluting shareholders to, to get even more money to have on their balance sheet to do the things that they need to do to stay in business. But in this case, what DraftKings decided to do was they decided to actually take on some debt. Now they raise that money through debt through convertible senior notes, which they're due in 2028. And those can be paid in either cash or even stock. It's another option that, uh, that they could be paid. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see that being paid in stock if the stock price does go up. So then obviously when they get that debt, it then sits on their balance sheet. So when we look at what their current assets are, that's when we can see that their assets actually went up by a billion dollars. So you guys understand, uh, get an understanding here of what we've been seeing here with DraftKings stock. Now, there's always a bunch of fluff that goes on with with these short reports. I mean, there's, there's I'm not saying that any of that information is not accurate, um, but you have to always look at it from their perspective. Their business is to make money off of the price of the stock going down. So you, you can take that however you want. Now, if you're somebody that's invested into DraftKings, you have to also think about it someone is saying negative things about the company that you're invested into are you going to hold on to that or are you going to sell it or are you going to say hey th this is an opportunity to start buying the dip because hey we know that this stock is going to be releasing their q2 2021 earnings eventually and we know that the whole nba draft is on there pretty good opportunity to be buying the dip now obviously this isn't any sort of financial advice this is just my personal opinion and you guys can take my opinion and do what you want with it. Now, I'd like to know what you guys think about all this. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. New videos coming out on my channel all the time. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you all in the next video coming very soon.